Laurie Lebon Langton, do you think schools should basically take the decision that kids are going to go meat free whilst they're at that school? No. Um, changes to diet are an example of a small action that you can take to have big results on your health, on wider society, less reliance on the NHS uh, and on the planet as well. And that's absolutely the case. But there are a whole range of ways of doing that, and particularly in a school setting, ways in which you can involve the kids more. There are so many examples around the world in the UK of schemes in which you get the kids in lessons where they learn about food and the food system, and then you give them the opportunity to help cater their menu, engaging with local groups, farmers and other things. And that provides such a more enriching experience to the children and embeds more lessons, you know? So I, I think the approach is not the right one, but the issue at heart is that we do need to change our diets and we'll get benefit from them. Peter? Why, why do we need to change our diet? Why? Because we have high rates of diabetes and obesity in this country. But that's not the reason to being given. The, the reasons are being given is that this will climate. somehow help the climate. And, it, and one of the major causes, one of the major emitters globally is the food system. One of the major things that degrades soils and destroys biodiversity is the way that we produce food globally. One of the biggest factors driving um, all sorts of negative issues is the food system. We have to make changes. That is not something that's, that anyone is debating here. But I, I, well, it is, experience. actually. Be... I'm, I'm debating it entirely, and I would hope that even a primary school teacher, and definitely you, Laurie, as an environmental advisor, would know that climate change isn't that straightforward. There's been reports and articles all this week on global greening, which you guys all choose to ignore mm. and not talk about the positives that will also come through climate change, and already are. You choose to ignore those. And here we've got the vilification of parents who are apparently poisoning their kids by putting red meat in their lunch boxes, and I, which I think is outrageous. Kids, as it is, are faddy and fussy enough about food, and parents have to think, whatever can I get them to eat until they grow out of their fads, and, and should be left to make those decisions. And schools should get on with teaching truths not fussing over what's in their lunchbox. The, the fact is that I, I would agree with that. But the, look, this is obviously political and it's ideological. Mm. There's just no getting away from it. I mean, I know you didn't want to talk about this particular school, but I think, as I understand it, I believe, you know, this particular head teacher uh, also is very anti-discipline. She doesn't like kids being shouted at, things like that. It goes with the territory so much, you know. This all goes with the territory. And the idea that somehow or other... Uh, you can impose your beliefs, actually, which is what this is. When, we, when I was last on, actually, with you, Michelle, we were talking about um, some teacher getting kids to write nasty letters to Boris Johnson. <laughs> yeah, we were. Right? I mean, what is happening in our schools? You know, this is just... Uh, with this particular uh, example, I mean, kids need meat to grow healthily. You know, they need to. It, it, it should be something that you make a, a decision on maybe when you're older. Sorry? It's very easy to take one example and think that the whole world has gone mad and that every school is imposing some dictum on the kids about what they can eat and cannot eat. I didn't eat. think I said that. No, no, and I'm not accusing you of that either. I'm saying that we, in, in this particular instance, we and, and the issue of food and uh, how we can understand what's good for us and not and how the food system works globally, we should give the kids the opportunity to absorb in the latest, best information about that and then to cater the menus at their schools accordingly. And I, there's many schemes out there that people should go and look up which do this. And on the particular point around the climate crisis, um, the, the way we grow and distribute food globally is having a very large negative impact on the environment. And that's a problem that we've got to sort out.